Tinagong sa ating uh, mithihin o gustuhin na magkaroon ng masaya at manigong taon, manigong bagong taon. Kung hindi, kinakailangan mo ay makita natin muna sa scriptures o sa salita ng Diyos. Kung anong klaseng direksyon ang ating tatahakin. Nakasalalay mo dito sa direksyon ng ating tatahakin Ang sabi mo rito, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Akin hong binigyan ng titulo na What Direction Will You Take? Ang atin hong topic for today. Bago natin ang pag-aralan nito ay hinihiling ko na tayong lahat ay yumukot, kumikit at tayo ay dumulog sa presensya ng ating Panginoon Diyos. Aming Ama, makapangyarihan, mabuting Diyos. Tunay, Panginoon, ay yung ipinamalas sa amin, na sa aming pamilya, sa aming iglesia, ang inyong katapatan, pag-ibig na hindi nagmamaliw, at mga pagpapala noong nakaraang taong 2022. Wala sino man sa amin na maari makabilang ng mga pagpapalang ito. Gayunpaman, Panginoon, ang aming mga puso ay lubos na nagagalak na nagkakasalamat. Hindi lamang sa mga pagpala, kundi sa lahat dahil po sa inyo, sa inyong presensya. The love, the God that loves us, the God who is with us. Tunay, Panginoon, na inyong pinaalala sa amin nung nakaraang buwan, nung kami nagdiriwang ng season of Christmas, ng pinakamahalagang tatlong salita ay mga salitang God with us. And the God who was with us last year is the very same God that is with us this year. And that will be with us from January 1 to December 31 of 2023. Kaya Panginoon, bilang aming Emmanuel, kinikilala namin na sa aming pag-aaral po ninyong salita, kayo ay nasa aming kalagitnaan. Kaya kami ay samahan ninyo Buksan ninyo, Panginoon, ang aming mga espiritual na paningin at espiritual na pandinig. Nang sa gayon, Panginoon, ay hindi ko masayang ang oras na ito ng aming pag-aaral ng inyong salita. Nawa ito ay maging baon namin para sa kabuuan ng taong ito. At higit pa roon, Panginoon, na siyang magbigay, Panginoon, ng paghihimok at motibasyon sa amin na lalo pa kayong makilala, lalo kayong mapagsimbihan, at lalo kayong sambahin. Salamat aming Ama sa inyong gagawin at dahil po dyan, ay maingat lamang namin binabalik sa inyo lahat ng papuri at pagsamba sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. Sinasabi ko sa atin ng Biblia, as we look at the next slide, na meron ho lamang dalawang direksyon 
na maaari mo natin kahapin sa ating mga buhay. Sinasabi mo sa atin ng Matthew 7, 13-14 na meron hong tinatawag na maluwag na daan, maluwag na pintuan. At meron din namang makipot o masikip na pintuan at daan. Doon sa maluwag na daan, sabi ni Kristo sa Matthew 7, marami ang tinatahak ang daan na iyon. Sa makipan na daan ay kakaunti lamang ang dumaraan doon. Sa malawak na daan, marami ang napapahamak na sisira. Sa makipan na daan ay kakaunti lamang ang nakakatagpunon, ngunit ang kahantungan naman ay buhay. Kaya ho, ito ang konsepto na siyang ituturo sa atin ng Panginoon sa pamagitan ho ng pag-aaral natin ng Salmo chapter 1. Meron lamang dalawang direksyon ang buhay ng tao. Yun hong daan ng katuwiran, daan ng mga matuwid, at ang daan ng mga hindi matuwid. Noon hong April 1912, isang daan at uh, isang libo at limang daang buhay ang nawala. Noong lumubog ho yung isang barko na tinatawag nating Titanic. Nagkaroon nga ako di ba ng mga pelikula sa uh, nangyari ho sa barkong Titanic. Bago lumubog ang barko na yon, ito ay tinatawag na unsinkable ship na pinagmamalaki ho ng mga gumawa nito o ng mga may-ari nito. Yun is an unsinkable ship. Ngunit noong April 1912, it claimed 1,500 lives. Nung matapos ho ang search and rescue uh, work ng mga, uh, ng mga authorities, sila ho ay naglagay ng isang malaking billboard. Nang sa gayon ay makita ho ng mga kamag-anak kung ano ho ang nangyari sa mga pasahero. Doon sa malaking billboard na yon ay meron hong dalawang row. Yung isang row ho nakalagay ron uh, save. Yung kabilang row nakalagay loss. Nandun ho yung pangalan ng mga taong naligtas at yung mga tao naman sa kabila yung mga tao, yung mga pangalan nila na nawala o namatay. Kaya ho, sa mga tao nakatingin doon sa billboard na yon Nasa dalawang kategorya lamang ang mga tao na pasahero mula doon sa Titanic. Yung mga tao na ligtas at yung mga tao na buwis ang kanilang buhay o nawala ang kanilang mga buhay. Those who were saved and those who were lost. Wala hong nasa middle ground. And what we can see is that even in this life, there's no such thing as a middle ground. Marami mga tao, they will say na, well, hindi naman ako banal na tao, pero hindi rin naman ako masamang tao. Nandiyan lang ako sa gitna. Nandiyan lang ako sa neutral. Pero in the eyes of the Lord and in the teachings of the Bible, ang kondisyon ng tao ay nasa dalawang kategorya lamang. Yung mga, mat- yung mga matuwid at yung mga hindi. Yung mga ligtas at yung mga ligaw. The same and the less. Kaya sa ating text ngayon ay makikita natin ang pagkakahalintulad o yung comparison ng dalawang individual. Yung righteous at yung wicked. Sa description ito ho, dito ho bumabaksak lamang ang mga tao. You are either righteous in the eyes of God or you are wicked in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, it doesn't really matter how we see ourselves, brethren. What matters is, ano ba ang tingin ng Panginoon sa bawat tao na kanyang nilalang. Sa mata ng Panginoon, we, we are either righteous or we are wicked. And there's no such thing as middle ground, gaya na sabi ko ho kanina. Kaya ho, itong reality na ito ay hindi lang natin makikita sa Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1 is simply, brethren, one of the texts that shows us na ito ang katotohanan. In fact, halimbawa sa Matthew chapter 25, we can see here na 
yung paparating na judgment ng Panginoon. Ang gagawin ho niya ay sa araw na yon kanyang ihiwalay ang mga tupa sa mga kambing. Yung mga tupa ay naglalarawan ho sa mga anak ng Diyos, ang mga naligtas. Yung mga kambing naman ay naglalarawan ho sa mga tao na kung saan sila ay dadalhin sa dagat-dagat ng apoy. Kasama ang jablo at ang mga sumama sa jablo mga anghel. And even in Matthew chapter 13, na kung saan ginamit ng Panginoon dito ang isang parable regarding yung final judgment na mangyayari, meron ho siyang ginamit dito na comparison regarding yung width, WHET, at yung widths, WWEDS. At sinasabi roon sa Matthew 13.30 na hayaan natin sila ay yumabong ng sabay hanggang sila ay aanihin. At sa panahon ng pag-aani, ay sasabihin ko sa mga mag-aani na i-gather muna yung mga weeds. Bind them, buklo rin sila, tapos sunugin sila. At pagkatapos naman, tipunin ang mga weeds at ilagay sa barn, sabi ng Panginoon. Yung mga weeds so, ay nagre-refer sa mga hindi ligtas, sa mga weekend. At yung mga wit naman ay tumutukoy sa mga taong naligtas ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. The righteous men. Sinabi rin ni Kristo sa Matthew 13.47, sabi niya, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So yung mga hindi magandang isda ay itinapo na lang, wala silang gamit, walang silbi. At yung mga magagandang isda ay sila yung uh, itinago para sila ay mapakinabangan, may benta. Again, referring the wicked men to the bad fish and the righteous men to the good fish. Kaya sinasabi ko yan, ganun din daw sa katapustapusan ng panahon. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. And in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, Christ was drawing the line between the wicked and the righteous. So we see here a teaching, brethren, of the Lord Jesus Himself regarding the uh, true spiritual condition of men categorized only into two, the righteous and the wicked. Kaya ngayon ho, as we move into the next slide, let us now look at the first category, which is uh, the righteous, and let us see the way of the righteous. Now, the righteous man, ang sabi ho ng verse 1, is described as blessed. Now, yung word na blessed means to have divine favor. God is pleased with those who are righteous. Nung New Testament ho, nung sinabi ni Christ kay Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So, it was a privilege for, of course, not only Peter, but for the Apostle, that they are considered blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. For the mere fact that they have a personal relationship with Him, and more specifically at that time, It was only Peter, of course, through the revelation of the Father, who was able to understand that the man speaking in front of them is no mere man, but the very Son of God, anak ng Diyos. Sabi sa kanya, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Now, in the greatest sermon na pinangaral ng Panginoon, the Sermon on the Mount, Meron hong magandang uh, section doon, which is the Beatitudes. 
In fact, meron akong walong Beatitudes. And in every Beatitude, ho, we see the first word na ginamit ng Panginoon. Ano ho yung unang salita na yun? Blessed. Amen? Blessed are the poor, blessed are the those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed so on and so forth. So, hindi ho ito coincidence na nauna ho yung salitang blessed. Everyone who is in the kingdom of God, lahat po ng mga iniligtas ng Panginoon, everyone who are headed into God's kingdom, they are the most blessed person in the whole world. So when we look at people na maaring uh, much better uh, compared to us in terms of uh, social standing, uh, in terms of uh, monetary standard, mag natin silang kaingitan. If you are a believer, whether uh, you are known or not, you are blessed. Amen? Kaya nga kanina ko ang talang ko sa inyo, kayo ko ba'y masaya ngayong araw na ito? Amen? Knowing that we are so much blessed in Christ Jesus. Actually, lahat po tayo mga more than billionaires. Alam niyo ba yan? Bakit po? Kasi po yung ating blessing ko ay hindi ho mabilang bilang. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Pakasabi nyo, nasan ba yung blessing na yung pastor? Tingin nyo kayo sa itaas. Okay? Buti walang buti kaya rito. Pakakala nyo yung buti kaya ang blessing. Sabi ng Bible na that we are, we are ano po? We have spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And we are all heirs in Christ and through Christ. Kaya ho, kung wala tayong ginto rito, huwag ho kayong maganda na magkasawa ho tayo sa ginto doon. Sa langit. Kung wala ho tayong mansion dito, meron ho tayong mansion for all eternity in heaven. Okay? It will only be uh, a matter of time para mahawakan at ma-enjoy ho natin yung mga bagay na yun. But even though we are not yet there, we are blessed because we have in our lives the owner of everything. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ho yung word na blessed in Hebrews, uh, rather in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, in the Hebrew, it is the word asher. Na ang ibig sabihin ho nun ay so much happy. So hindi lang ho basta happy, no? Meron ho pinaghuhugutan yung ating kasiyahan. Hindi lang ho happy dahil sa you feel happy. Di ba may mga days na you feel happy. May mga circumstances that will make you make you happy. Pero hindi lang ho doon. Kaya nga ang mas magandang ginamit dito in the English translation na siya hindi ginamit sa ibang translation ay yung word na blessed. Kasi ho merong ano, it makes more justice to the Hebrew word. Meron ho mas malalim o kalaliman doon sa salitang blessed. So, ibig sabihin mo rito, yung word na blessed na yun is actually a result of receiving something from the Lord. And what is that? Yung grace ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kaya ho, it is much appropriate that when people say, how are you? We don't say, well, I'm happy. But we rather say, I'm blessed. Amen? I am blessed. And because I am blessed, I am happy as well. So, blessedness springs from something unmerited. Isang bagay na hindi mo pinagpaguran. Hindi mo sinasabing masaya ako kasi pinagpaguran ko yung trabaho ko, kaya marami ako ngayong sweldo, marami, marami ako ngayong uh, benefits, marami akong bonus ngayong Pasko ito. No, it is something na hindi mo pinagpaguran, pero binigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. At ano ho yun? Binigay niya ang kanyang sarili, binigay niya ang buhay na walang hanggan, binigay ka ng kapatawaran ng iyong kasalanan. Kaya, katulad ng sabi ng Salmi sa Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Okay? Bless His holy name and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. At yung mga, yung mga reason ng kanyang pag-bless sa Panginoon is not even about material or physical things. 
It is about spiritual things. Diba? Yung sabi nun na, He forgives all my iniquities and so on and so forth, mga spiritual na bagay. Yun ho ang nagbibigay ng kasiyahan. Kaya ho, if you are not a believer in Christ, nothing will ever make you happy and satisfied at the same time. There are things that can make us superficially happy. Pero, hindi ho siya long-lasting. Meron ng isang pasyente one time na nagkaroon ng siya ng chronic depression. At siya ay bumisita sa isang sikat na British psychiatrist na ang pangalan ay si John Abernethy. So after examining him, ang sabi ni Dr. Abernethy, para matanggal yung depression mo, kinakailangan mo ng entertainment. Kinakailangan mo ng amusement. Alam mo, punta ka ngayon sa theater malapit dito. Kasi dumating si ano si Grimaldi. Si Grimaldi yung araw na yun ay isa sa mga sikat na mga stand, uh, stand-up comedian. Puntahan mo si Grimaldi. I'm sure na papatawanin ka niya, papasayahin ka niya, and it will make you feel better. Kasi kung drugs lang na binigay ko sa'yo, o gamot, hindi yan sapat. Ang sabi, ang sabi ko ng pasyente, uh, I think that would not work yung suggestion nyo. Bakit naman, sabi ng doktor? Because I am Grimaldi. Siya pala si Grimaldi. The one who makes people entertained and happy. Pero siya mismo ay depressed. Kaya ho, even a great comedian can be depressed. It will, it will not work dahil ang tunay na pagpapala at kasiyahan sa buhay na sa Panginoon. Kaya ho, hindi katakataka sinabi ng mga Apostol Pablo sa mga taga-Pilipos, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, Rejoice. In the Lord. Not in anything else, but in the Lord. Always. So, when we talk about the righteous person, What direction, as we look into the next slide, ano hong direction ang kanyang iniiwasan? So, yung righteous soul is first defined in a negative manner. Ibig sabihin, no, ano yung kanyang landas na hindi tinatahap? The righteous man does not associate with evil. Of course, he loves everyone, including sinners, pero he does not associate with evil. This man does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Yung salita hong ungodly dyan refers to those who are immoral at yung word na counsel refers to their way of thinking. Yung paano ho yung, yung pagtakbo ng kanilang kaisipan. In the next slide, we can also see that this righteous man does not stand in the path of sinners. Yung salitang sinners ho dyan ay tumutukoy doon sa mga overtly sinners. Ibig sabihin, hindi lingid sa madlang tao yung kanilang mga kasalanan. Yung talagang pinangangalandakan nila. Hindi ho sila yung mga sinners na itinatago yung kanilang kasalanan dahil meron pa silang kaunting kahihiyan. Ito ho talagang lantad talaga yung kanilang ginagawang kasalanan. At yung word na path dito refers to their life. Yung word naman na scornful, so we are still in verse 1, yung salitang scornful refers to those who mock holy things. At yung word na sit refers to their gathering place. Ang sinasabi mo sa atin ng Biblia, as we look into the next slide, ay if a righteous and blessed man is really pursuing Righteousness, he will what? He will intentionally separate himself doon sa mga tao yun. Ang sabi ho ni Paul sa mga taga-Korint in 1 Corinthians 15.33 that do not be mock, sinasabi niya, that sinasabi niya na bad company corrupts good morals. I mean, we don't care kahit na tayong pinaka-mature Christian. 
If you keep company with people without morality, people who scorn the holy things of God, sabi ng Bible, sooner or later, you will be like them. And it will not be the other way around. We will be like them. And that, therefore, Scripture admonishes us to be separated because we become like our friends. Kaya ho, yung binabanggit sa, sa Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, yung mga description na yan, is actually an escalation of evil. Kaya ho, nandun yung word na uh, walk, stand, and then sit. Ano ho ulit ang sabi ron? Does not walk. Diba? In the counsel of the wicked, does not stand. Okay? In the way of sinners, does not sit in the seat of scoffers. So, what does it mean to walk in the counsel of the wicked? Ang ibig sabihin lang po niyan ay humihingi yung tao ng advice sa mga tao rin na katulad niya na fallen, broken, and sinful. Kaya ho, ito ang karakteristik ng karamihan ng mga tao. Minsan ho, nahuhulog din ang mga Christian sa ganyang uri ng patibong. Eh. Minsan ho, ay kumukuha tayo ng mga advice sa mga celebrities dahil sikat sila, sa mga psychologists, dahil bestseller yung kanilang mga libro. Maraming sabihin natin na siguro marami akong mapupulot na wisdom sa tao ito dahil ang daming nagbabasa ng libro niya, ang daming nagsusuporta ng kanyang libro. Mga magazines, mga mga blogs sa internet na maraming subscribers, siguro maganda ang mga advice na mapupulot ko rito. Well, kung yung mga advice na yan, eh, patungkol sa paano magluto, paano magpuponi ng bahay, walang problema. Di ba? Pero kung ang advice ay paano ayusin ang pamilya mo, paano, paano mag-raise up ng isang godly family, paano magkaroon ng tamang pananaw sa buhay, paano maayos ang iyong sarili, hindi ko yun ang mga tamang lugar o mga tamang tao na dapat ko natin kunan ng mga advice. Because these people have not received Christ sa kanilang buhay. Ibig sabihin, sila ay bulag spiritually at hindi ko nila itataas ang pangalan ni Kristo. They cannot give us advices that are gospel centered that will glorify the Lord and isang bagay ho na sabi ng Bible sa atin mismo kay Kristo sa Matthew 15:14 let them alone they are blind guides and if the blind lead another blind both will fall into a pit and this leads us to our next phrase no sabi niya nor stands in the way of sinners So, ibig sabihin mo rito ay uh, marami hong mga tao ang gusto ho nila na advice. Ayun hong idadaan sila sa isang paraan o sa isang tahakin na madali, na komportable. Na kung saan hindi ka babatikusin ng lipunan dahil the rest is doing it also. So, walang pressure Walang persecution and opposition. Yun ang magandang, yun yung advice na madalas gusto ng tao. Meron siyang kakampi. Di ba? Karamihan ng mga humingi ng advice, sa totoo lang ho, naghahanap ng kakampi. Para ano, para mapagtakpan at majustify yung pinagawa nilang pakakamali o pakakasal. It is the broad way. Of course, they will, not, uh, they will not admit na it is immoral, it is sinful, it is rebellious in the eyes of the Lord. Pero in reality, yun ang totoo. And the judgment of the Lord is that these people soon would believe na yung ginagawa nila ay tama. Yung ginagawa nila ay they will not be accountable to the Lord in the last day. Ito yung sinasabi ng Bible, sabi ni Paul na following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work 
in the sense of disobedience. Ito ho yung mga tao, they are standing together against God. They are sinners who have missed the mark. At sabi nyo lang Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. So ito na ho yung, ano ho no, yung pag-escalate ng kasamaan ho ng tao. Ito na ho yung tinatawag nilang final act of rebellion. So itong mga tao ito ho ay talagang uh, kulang na lang ay murahin nila ang Diyos. So, we should not seek advice against those people who mock the Lord and the holy things and the holy subjects and matters of God's kingdom. Itong mga taong ito ho ay they would begin to teach others and ridicule pagka ho they will not conform to their own sinful lifestyle. If they will not embrace yung sinful lifestyle nila. At nakikita ko natin even today, di ba, we, we love these people because they are also made in the image of God. Pero yun hong gay movement ngayon, talagang they are really ano, gaining grounds. And they are even infiltrating the life of many churches. Lalo na doon sa Amerika. Na kung saan itinuturo na well, you can be saved without being really changed because God will accept you for who you are. So whether you are a gay, a lesbian, or a, a criminal, or a rapist, as long as you just believe in Jesus, it doesn't really matter what kind of life you live. Pero hindi ko gano'n. Ang sabi nga ni Paul sa mga taga-Korin, sinasabi niya na, you were, plural, yun ho ay, hindi lamang plural, kung hindi past. No, you were, kayo ay mga dating, ano ho, homosexuals, thief, idolaters, criminals, so on and so on. But now you have been washed. You have been sanctified. And you have been justified. So, ibig sabihin ho, past na ho yung ganong klaseng lifestyle which verifies yung kanilang claims na talagang sila ay mga mananampalataya. Hindi lang sa bibig, kung hindi sa kanilang mga buwan. Ang sabi nga ng Panginoon nung kanyang kinoconfront yung mga Pharisees in Matthew 23 verse 15, Woe to you, Christ and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much as a child of hell as yourselves. Hindi ho tinuturo yung tunay na godliness and righteousness. Pinababayaan lang nila yung mga tao na to live whatever kind of life they want to live. As long as they will just ano, they will just uh, adhere o sumunod sa mga patakaran ng mga pariseyo. Halimbawa, sabi ng Panginoon, I remember na, di ba, honor your father and mother. Pero, pinahihintulutan at tinotolerate ng mga pariseyo ng isang bata, murahin ng kanyang mga magulang as long as itong, itong anak na to nagbibigay ng ikapok sa templo o sa mga pariseyo. Meron siyang, meron siyang excuse para i-break ang commandments ng Panginoon Diyos. No wonder, ang kaharap ni Kristo mga pariseyo, puro woes ang binigay sa kanila, ang narinig ng Panginoon sa kanila. So ano ho ang direksyon na kinakailangan tahakin ng mga righteous? As we look into our next life, what direction does he take? Instead of partaking with evil, the righteous man loves the law. The law of the Lord. In fact, he delights in the law of the Lord. The word delight is actually a heart word. It is a term of great affection for God's word. He meditates upon the law day and night, brethren. Yung word na law ho dyan, tignan mo na natin sandali. The word law is the word Torah in Hebrew. 
commonly used para i-refer o ikukoy sa unang limang libro ng Biblia. Uh, I'm sure alam mo natin yung unang limang libro ng Biblia, di ba? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Pero yung Torah din ho, in Hebrew, also means instruction. Instruction. So, ibig sabihin ho, we delight in the instruction ng ating Panginoon Diyos. So, hindi lang ho yung, yung law, kung hindi all of Scripture. All of Scripture are God's instructions for all of us. Ang sabi ng Bible, meditate on these things. Well, ang sabi ni Paul in Philippians 4, 8 and 9, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think, okay, again, think or dwell, let your mind dwell on these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Ano ho yung kanilang natutunan, natanggap, narinig kay Pablo? God's Word. At yung nakita nilang pinamuhay niya, mula pa rin sa salita ng Diyos. Sabi ni Paul, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So when we say meditating on God's law, yung sinasabi ng, uh, ng Psalm chapter 1 verse 2, Hindi lang ito yung basta when anything I want to meditate uh, about the Lord, yun ang gagawin ko. Hindi ho ang guide ho natin ang scripture. Ang salita ng Diyos. In scripture we find what is true, what is honorable, what is just, what is pure, what is lovely, what is commendable, what is excellent, and what is worthy of praise. Let our minds dwell on these things. Alam nyo, in Eastern meditation, ang goal ho nila ay i-empty mo yung mind mo para magkaroon ng vacuum. Pero yun ho ay delikado, by the way. Delikado ho yun dahil ang empty mind ay isang magkakataon para imbitahan ang, ang isang deception or even a demonic spirit. That's why we should never try at all yung mga ino-offer ng mga Eastern meditation niya, including yoga, by the way. Pero in Christian meditation, ang goal ho natin is not to empty our mind, but to fill our mind with what? Ng salita ng Diyos. Paano ho mangyayari yan? Kinakailangan ko, maingat natin pinag-iisipan ang bawat salita na ating nababasa sa Biblia. Yun ho ang ginawa ni Mary, by the way, nung dumating ang mga shepherds, dinalaw ho sila doon sa, sa manger or stable. At nung sinabi ng mga shepherds na may nagpakita ang anghel sa kanila, ito ang sinabi ng anghel sa kanila, sabi ng Bible, and Mary treasured all these things in her heart. Yun ho yung ano, pondering and meditating. He was, she, she was carefully thinking about each word na sinabi ng mga shepherds na narinig nila sa mga anghel. Yung mga anghel na yun, they were only saying those things na kanilang na-receive from God the Father na sabihin nila sa mga shepherds. And when we talk about meditation, it's not only thinking about each word, it is asking how can I apply these truths sa buhay ko. And you pray it back to the Lord. And you say, Lord, ito palang ibig sabihin niyan, thank you for giving me the wisdom on how to apply it. Lord, I pray that you will give me the grace to be able to apply these things and follow your will. Kaya nga ho, ang sabi ni Charles Spurgeon, and I quote, Meditation, choose the God and get the sweetness and nutritive virtue of the word into the heart and life. This is the way the godly bring forth much fruit. End of quote. So para ho yung ginagawa na proseso ng mga, ng mga cows, di ba? mga baka. Wala ho kayo makitang baka na pag pinakain nyo, biyak, lunok na agad na ganun. Hindi ho, di ba? Chinuchun nila eh. 
they're taking time para ko talagang ma ano nila ma ma digest nila ma processo nila yung nutrition ng kanilang mga kinakain and so even nutritionists would advise people na pag tayo ay kumakain din ay mag-uwi yung na bukas ng bibig sa may lunok na mas maganda raw ko na tayo ay ninguguya ko natin ng ng mabuti yung ating kinakain ngayon pag sinabi ko na pastor paano yan wala na akong ngipin ah, magkapastisa ka na yun ang solusyon amen <laughs> okay next uh, powerpoint po and regarding meditation of scripture what, what can we get out of the scripture ang ganda na sabi ni Paul in 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work okay nothing can beat that brethren it is not the magazines that we read it's not even the Christian literatures that we read although they are very helpful scripture brethren is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, for training, that we might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we can see here, brethren, that the man of God treasures the word of God. Is this the man and the woman that is sitting right now sa lugar na Are you that man? Are you that woman? Do you delight in the Bible? Are you always eager to hear from God whether in your own quiet time or every Sunday that you go here? Kung hindi ho, I pray that God would give you a desire, a hunger, a love for Him that would cause you to always want to hear His voice. And that's why reading the Bible, brother, is not just very simply doing it for the sake of ah, nagawa ko na yung checklist ko for today. Unahin ang Bible, check na yan. Mag-toothbrush, check na yan. Mag-breakfast, check na yan. Ihanda yung pagkain ng mga bata, ng mga apo ko. So, hindi lang po ganun eh. It is something that you do because you want to soak it in your life. Gusto mo na talagang siya ay maging bahagi ng buhay mo even for that day. Thinking it through, trying to work it out with the grace of the Lord, analyzing and clinging to every principle of the Bible. The righteous man has made the intentional decision to live life in accordance to God's word. That's his only standard. The standard of truth. The next thing in our slide is that the righteous man is not easily moved. This man is like an immovable firm tree. At ano ho naging resulta niya? Nagkakaroon po ng bunga. He is planted beside streams of water, sabi ng Pangang. Doon ho kinukuha ng, ano ho, ng puno yung kanyang buhay, yung kanyang vitality, yung kanyang nutrition. Kaya hindi ko katataka na sinabi ng Panginoon sa John 15, sa kanyang mga apostol, ang sabi niya, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who, he who abides in me bears what? Much fruit. Hindi niya na sinabi na, okay, the disciple ko na kayo, I'm sure you will all bear much fruit. Ang sabi niya, you have to abide in me. To bear much fruit. And this is for the glory of the Father that you bear so if a man is planted and nourished in God's word, brethren, garantisado siya ay lalago sa bunga ng Espiritu na siyang tinutukoy sa Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Siyang po lahat siya. At sinasabi ng ng salmo, ng salmis at yung kanyang mga dahon ay hindi ho nanunuyo 
Ibig sabihin ho, healthy siya spiritually. The righteous are healthy and they are immovable. Kaya ho, sinasabi ng psalmist, this would bring forth its fruit in each season and whose leaf does not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. So, in this verse, in verse 3, the psalmist ay nagbibigay ko siya ng outline ng mga various blessings regarding the faithful and righteous person dahil sa resulta ng kanyang devotion sa Panginoon Diyos, sa salita ng Panginoon Diyos. Alam niyo, a tree planted by a stream of water is truly blessed. Kasi ho, yung water is always in easy reach. Madali ho maabot ng mga ugat ng isang puno. Kesa ho yung malayo sa tubig. So the tree can be assured of bringing forth fruit in each season. Kasi lagi ho siyang natutubigan. Of course, I know na may mga ibang uh, halaman na ayaw ko ng tubig. Pero ito ay isang general principle lamang na tinuturo sa atin ng Biblia. So in like manner, yung leaf also does not wither. Kaya ho, pagka ho, meron ho reliable water source ang puno, madali ang buhay sa puno. The same thing, brethren, with the person who loves the law of God. The person who meditates on it and seeks to follow God's word. Tinutulungan siya ng salita ng Diyos to avoid many of life's pitfalls. Minsan sinasabi natin, ay, kaya ako nagkasala kasi ako isang tao lamang. Okay, partly correct. Pero, hindi ba sana naiwasan yung mga ganong klaseng pitfalls and temptations at misery sa buhay? Kung ikaw lamang ay nakakumit na i-meditate at sundin ang salita ng Panginoon Diyos? Hindi ba mas may iwasan lalo ang depression kung ang salita ng Diyos ang laging source mo ng kalakasan, ng comfort, ng encouragement. It nurtures the soul. At sinasabi ng Biblia na it brings forth fruit in his life, in season. So yung godly person does not only take in nourishment, pero it will also produce godly fruit. Many times we pray for a fruitful life. Pero we skip yung pinakamahalaga muna. At ano ho yun? Yung root. There's no fruit without root. Kung meron ho tayong malalim na ugat sa Panginoon Diyos, sa Kanyang salita, it will nourish us. Makes our Christian life vit- uh, with vitality and it will definitely and completely produce godly fruit. And that fruit will have a seasonal character. Ibig sabihin ho, every time that that fruit is needed as a response to any situation, yung fruit na yan ho, lalabas ho. Kung merong isang situation na kailangan ng self-control, magagamit mo yan. Kasi nasa iyo eh. Lumagos ang buhay mo. Kung kinakailangan na magpakita ng pag-ibig sa tao because you have grown in God's word, lalabas yan. May express mo yan sa tao kahit na yung tao ay unlovable o may ginawa sa yung hindi maganda. Maaaring yung feelings mo might be hurt pero your will and your actions will demonstrate yung bunga ng Espiritu towards, uh, towards a situation or towards a person. And that fruit, by the way, is cultivated. Hindi ko siya basta-basta na overnight dumarating. And even in ministry uh, results, in ministry opportunities, iba-iba ko eh. Minsan matagal bago makita yung buma. Si Adoniram Johnson, for example, na siya pinadala sa Burma, he was about to quit. Kasi missionary ako siya, yung first year niya, walang convert. Second year, walang convert. Third year, walang convert. Fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, walang convert. In the, on the eighth year, doon siya nagkaroon ng first convert ko niya. And then, tuloy-tuloy na ho yun, na lumago yung kanyang gawain. In season, 
sa tamang panahon ng Panginoon Diyos, namumunga ang isang taong lumalakad sa katulungan. And sometimes we don't uh, we don't even see the fruit of our work in our lifetime. At least not all the results. Sabi ng Biblia, may isa nagtatanim, may isa nagdidilig. Pero sino ang nagpapalagot? Ang Panginoon Diyos. So, the one who plants and the one who waters really are not really to use the word not really significant. Ang pinakamahalaga ay yung nagpapalagot ang Panginoon Diyos. Kaya ang trabaho natin whether you are a pastor or uh, you are not in the full-time ministry, ang trabaho ho natin ay magtanim ng magtanim ng magtanim. Huwag ho nang sama ng loob. Ha? Magtanim ho ng kabutihan, magtanim ng salita ng Diyos, ng Ibanghelyo, ng kabutihan sa mga tao. May iba nagdidilig, nagre-reinforce ng ginagawa natin, nagpapatuloy. Pero, tiyak naman tayo na kung yung ginagawa ho natin ay galing sa Panginoon Diyos, para laguhin nyo ng Panginoon. Amen? 30 times, 70 times, 100 times ang Diyos ang gumagawa. Ang mahalaga lang mo ay, sabi nga ni Paul sa mga taga-Corinthians, yun know, ang imagine mo, if you are a member of that Corinthian church na napakagulo, parang siguro yung iba ho, parang nadismayan, nadismayan na, nawala na ng gana, baka yung iba about to quit ministry, Pero sabi ng Panginoon sa True Paul, sabi niya na sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think in verse 15, uh, 58. Therefore, beloved brethren, sabi niya, do not be what? Uh, be, in, uh, uh, be steadfast, okay? immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your work in the Lord is never in vain. It's never in vain. Kaya ho, yung mga ibang bunga ng ating mga labor, you will not see them here on earth, but in heaven, for sure. Makikita mo natin. Yung mga taong sinera mo ng gospel sa mga lugar na hindi mo na nabalikan, yung mga taong na sinera mo ng gospel na hindi mo na uli nakita, one day, yung iba sa kanila, makikita nyo rin. Makikita mo natin. Yun ho yung fruit ng labor natin. Yung mga batang madaliit na sinera mo ng gospel na hindi mo na namit, one day, some of them or many of them, you see in heaven, the fruit of our day. And of course, I would fail to note, kung hindi ko babanggitin ito, na marami ho mga godly and righteous people often prosper as a result of their faithful lives. Of course, alam natin na at the end of the day, ang Diyos pa rin talaga ang nagpapala. May mga ibang mga Kristiyano ko na because of their faithfulness in the Lord, they were blessed monetarily, financially, physically. Dahil maayos ang kanilang pamumuhay, they work hard, they develop reputations of honesty, integrity, and even a simple life. And God blessed them made them wealthy. Some became millionaires really. Pero, it is also true na may mga tao na maari hindi sila milyonaryo, maari wala silang sariling bahay o malaking bahay, pero pinagpala pa rin sila ng Panginoon. Why? Because blessing from the Lord is not only seen in how much account we have in the bank or how much property we own, but of course, we, we thank the Lord for brethren na may mga ganun po na privileges. Pero hindi lang huro nakikita. If you are living in harmony with people, you are a blessed man. If you are not wasting your time and energy and money on the things that are not really important, things that are not really necessary and may only bring you much worry, you are a blessed man. Godly virtues, brethren, may not always lead to wealth, but they would always lead to a blessed life. You will not put yourself in situations na masisira ang buhay mo at masisira ang pamilya mo. You're a blessing. So whatever the righteous man does, anuman ang kanyang ginagawa, 
he would prosper. And this verse shows us the blessedness of the righteous. Every year ho, na nagbabago ang kalendaryo, lagi ho natin naririnig itong mga tinuturo ng mga Chinese uh, philosophers na mga year of the rat, year of the horse, year of the rabbit. Ngayon, di, ho, di ba year of the ano ngayon? Rabbit. Okay? Kasi 12 year cycle ho yan eh. May labing dalawang hayop po eh. Na itinalaga ng isang philosopher nung araw. Parang yan ho yung kanilang Chinese na soja. Diba? Na tinatawag. Kung tayo ho, meron tayong tinagis na, na uh, mga soja sign na Cancer, uh, Libra. Ako Libra ako eh. No? Pero nung naging Christian ako, hindi na Libra na ako dyan sa mga yan. Sa mga soja soja na yan. And na-assign tayo sa mga tinatawag nila mga powerful animals na yun. Na pagka na-chempo, na ikaw ay pinanganak sa cycle na yun. Let's say, ba, 2023 ngayon. Okay? At uh, ikaw ay nasa year of the rabbit na ikaw pinanganak. Whatever year na pinanganak ka. Okay? So, nasa year of the rabbit ka. Tabang-tama. 2023 is the year of the rabbit. Sabi mo na po. So, swertihin ako sa taong ito. Kasi pinanganak ako noon sa in the year of the rabbit. At sinasabi nga ako, meron lang akong research dito, na sinasabi ko na every year of the rabbit ay yung mga sacrificio raw nung nakaraan, na ginawa ng mga pinanganak sa year of the rabbit ay gagantimpalaan generously sa year of the rabbit. So kung hindi ka Christian at naniniwala ka rito, isipin mo, Naku, ito ang taon ko. This is my year. Lahat ng aking paghihirap, gagantimpalaan. palaan. Lahat ng aking mga efforts, makikita ko ang bunga ng mga ito. Kaya, this is my year. Ang sabi pa rin ako ng mga naniniwala rito na yung mga nagsusugal o sumusugal, no, yung mga tumatayan ng loto. At yung mga stockbrokers daw, ay meron silang extra luck or good luck sa taon na ito. The year of the rabbit. So imagine mo kung naniniwala ka rito, ikaw ay nasa year of the rabbit. Di mas talo ka magiging sugarol. Di ba? Ako, ito na. Tataba na ako sa loto ngayon. At sinasabi nila ito rin daw ko, ang pinakamagandang taon sa mga year of the rabbit na mag-asawa. Paano kung hindi mo pa panahon para mag-asawa? Ipilitin mo mag-asawa kahit hindi ka pahanda. Dahil naniniwala ka na ito ang iyong taon na tamang mag-asawa at magkaroon ng mga anak. Haasa mo ba tayo sa ganyang maling paniniwala? Ang philosophy niyo. As much as we love the Chinese people, but we never agree as believers na yan ang paraan ng pagkapala ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Kaya kung halimbawa tayo ay uh, sumasalubong sa bagong taon, hindi mo natin ginagawa yan dahil sa naniniwala tayo na ang pagsalubong sa bagong taon ay magbibigay sa atin ng swerte. Na pag ikaw ay tumanon, ikaw ay tataas pa. At nalagdagang pa ang height mo. At pag ikaw ay sumigaw at magtorotot at magpaputok ay makapalayo sa mga masamang negative uh, element sa buhay mo. Hindi mo tayo naniniwala sa mga ganun bagay. But simply, we are just thanking the Lord. And we are filled with hope as we welcome the new year because we know the Lord will walk with us just as He did in the past years. And we are very thankful. Sinasabi ng Psalm 19, exactly the, the opposite, kabaliktaran, ng tinuturo ng aking binabanggit kanina. In Psalm 19, beginning at verse 7, sabi niyan, God's law is perfect, restoring the soul. It is sure, making wise the simple. It is right, rejoicing the heart. It is pure, enlightening the eyes. It is true and righteous altogether. And God's law warns the faithful of dangers that they can avoid. And in keeping God's law, sabi niyan, they have great reward. The faithful obtain great rewards. 
It's not believing in one set of uh, superstition or teaching from any kind of worldly philosophy. It is in keeping God's will. You are so blessed when your soul is restored. You are so blessed when, you know, you become wise. When your heart is rejoicing. When your eyes are enlightened. When you become righteous. When you are warned of faithful paths and dangers. The faithful obtain great rewards in keeping God's love. On the other hand, we look at the other side of the coin. Ito naman ho yung mga wicked men. As we look into the next slide. The way of the wicked. Ang sabi ho ng salmis, the wicked are not so. Grabe ho yung contrast. Very affirmative ho yung tense. The wicked are not so. Lahat ho ng mga ginagawa ng righteous, hindi ginagawa ng wicked. Lahat ho ng mga blessing ng righteous, wala sa mga wicked. Yung favor ng Diyos sa mga righteous, wala siya sa mga wicked. Yun ho yung contrast niya. The wicked are not so. Ang sabi ko ng Bible, the wicked are like chaff. Nakalimutan ko yung Tagalog ng chaff. Eh. Pero pag nag-harvest ho, yung mga tao ng araw, in the old times, yung mga farmer ho, they end up with a pile of ano ho, no? Of three parts. Tatlong bagay. Una ho, yung seed or grain itself na siyang pinaka-valuable part ng plant. Pangalawa, yung straw. A useful byproduct that can be used as animal feeds or yung beddings ng mga animal. Yung pangatlo, yun ho yung shop o chop. Yun ho yung husk of the seed. And yun ho ay useless. Walang gamit. Wala na ko siyang pag, ano, paggagamitan. And it even requires an extra effort para yun ay adisin. Nung panahon ni Kristo ho, ganun ang kanilang ginagawa. Kaya yung mga farmers ho noon, sineseparate nila into three parts by throwing the harvest grain in the air in the presence of a breeze. So yung grain ho, na siyang pinakamabigat ng bahagi ng plant, would settle to the ground, babaksak mo sa lupa yun, yung straw, na siyang pinakapangalawang mabigat, would blow a short distance away, medyo tatarsik ng konti. Pero yung shock ko, anong mangyayari sa kanya? Dili pa rin ng usa. At tangayin ng hangin, kung saan man gusto siya tangayin ng hangin. Ganun mo siya kagaran. Wala siyang timbang. So when the psalmist says that the wicked are like chaff, he is saying that they are worthless and they are doomed to the fate of those who are of no value. Kaya pagdating ho ng huling araw sa paghuhukom, hindi ho makakaharap. Walang mukhang iaharap ko yung mga wicked. They will not, brethren, pass the judgment of the Lord. They will fall into the judgment of the Lord. Dahil sa kanilang kasamaan, dahil sa kanilang unbelief ay Kristo, the ungodly will not stand in the judgment. They will be brought away and sent into eternal perdition and even if they gnash and grind their teeth, there will no longer be any mercy reserved for them. What about the congregation of the righteous? The congregation of the righteous here refers to those who are saved. And the wicked will not be part of that number. Kaya sabi niyang, therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment. Ito ho yung idea ng final judgment na tinuturo ko ng Biblia both in the Old and New Testament. Nandiyan po yan sa Amos 5, Zephaniah 1, Malachi 3, Matthew 10, Matthew 11, Romans 2, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 1, Philippians 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 2 Peter chapter 2, Jude verse 6, and Revelation chapter 3, chapter 6, verse 17. So yun ho, the psalmist is saying 
na bagamat yung mga godly ay sila ho ay papasa sa panahon ng paghuhukom because God will pass over them as the Lord will see the blood of Christ applied in their lives. The wicked will fall. They will be convicted. And they will be subject to eternal punishment. So it is only appropriate that the righteous brethren will be separated from sinners. Like the grain separated from the chaff. That's why sabi ng Revelation, no evil person will even enter heaven. Will not even be given the, the opportunity to be in the presence of the Holy God. The day of judgment will separate sinners from the righteous forevermore. And we will now be finally free from the presence of sin. Kaya sabi mo rito, in the next slide, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Men are blessed or condemned on the basis of one decision, the way in which they have chosen to walk. Because the way we have chosen, brethren, reflects It, it is a reflection of whose God are you following. Ganun lang ako kasimple yun. Kaya ang, ang, ang challenge ni Joshua sa kanyang generation, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the God of the Hebrews or the God of the Americans. The God of our forefathers or the God of this other nation. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Kaya only think ko ho, the way in which we choose reflects our faith. Faith in whom? You know ang tanong dyan. Kaya only think ko ho, ang sabi ng Matthew 7, in the next slide, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Kaya ho, sinasabi niya ng verse 6, the last verse. Sabi niya, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Or literally, for Yahweh knows the way of the righteous. The word know in the Hebrew is the word yada. The Hebrew word yada means to know Pero meron hong shades, different shades ng meaning, depende o sa konteksto yan. Pero sa verse na ito, ang kahulugan mo niyan ay to know relationally. So, ang ating Panginoon Diyos, si Yahweh, is in deep relationship with the righteous. Pwede ko tayong gumamit lamang ng isang uh, para maintindihan lang ho natin, although it will not perfectly describe really this one, ay yung relasyon mo ng isang tatay sa kanyang mga anak. Meron hong, ano ho eh, meron hong deep relationship. You might know another person, pero hindi ho yada ang iyong pakakakilala sa tao nyo. And therefore, we can see here, brethren, that we have, brethren, a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Yahweh knows and He cares about the righteous to the point that He will make sure that we will arrive safely in His kingdom. Wala mga kahit na mo, kahit ang job mo, para tayo ay makapunta sa kanyang kahalian. Kahit patayin tayo ng job mo, hindi niya alam, it's the easiest way to be in, into glory. Diba? Kaysa magkasakad ka na matagal, umamatay ka agad, diretso ka na sa heaven. But the way of the wicked shall perish, sabi ng second part ng verse 6. Yahweh does not know the wicked, kaya sabi niya in Matthew 7, I never knew you. You doers of iniquity. He does not know the wicked in the same relational way. And given that the wicked are not in relationship with Yahweh, they have no eternal support 
and they will only expect eternal punishment. Sabi ni Robert Frost, I don't know if he's a Christian or not, isang magaling ko na manilika ng mga tulak. Meron mo siyang isang tulang ginawa na uh, ang title ay Two Roads. I will not read the whole poem, medyo mahaba. Sabi lang mo niya, sa isang section doon, he said, Two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Ano ko yung kanyang tinag na road? Yung hindi dinadaanan masyado. Kaunti lang pupunta rin. At sabi niya, but it has made all the difference. Sa buhay ko natin, dalawa na talaga ang daan. Yung matuwid at saka yung hindi matuwid. Wala akong dating daan, ha? by the way. May gawagawa lang po yan. Ang matuwid at ang hindi matuwid na daan. We are on a crossroads in life. At bilang mga tao ko, it's very easy to be tempted to pursue the easy path. Kaya alam mo natin si David Christian. In Psalm 23, in the twilight of his life, sabi niya, he leads me in the path of God, of righteousness. That's why this man, David, has committed to walk sa paraan, kataraanan ng Panginoon Diyos. And I hope that we will also have that heart. Today in our society, brethren, we are filled with only two roads. But they are disguised in many kind of roads. Pero in reality, that road that does not lead to Christ and in a Christ-exalting life is a road to hell. That's a road to hell. Of course, along the way, marami kong ino-offer na apple ang jam. Hindi ko ito. Ba? Hindi ko yung apple. Katulad ang ino-offer niya, mga, ano, mga bunga, whatever fruit that was, kay Adan sa kay Eva. Very tempting and very exciting and Siguro, yun nga ako, very, ano, it really brought so much craving sa puso ng ating mga una mga magulang. At lalo na ako ngayon in our modern world, it's very easy, brethren, to be tempted. Kasi yung kanilang, the way that they promote it because of the technology, ano, it's really very pleasing to the eyes. Even when you look at the advancement of uh, gadgets, di ba? Talagang yung mga resolutions, uh, high definition, OLED, super AMOLED, whatever you want to call it, brethren. Very tempting, not only to the younger generation, but for every person that are exposed to this technology. Pero ang tanong, anong roads ang mga yan? Is it a good road or is it an evil road? And whichever one you choose, brethren, I pray na we make the right decision by God's guidance. Pero as for me, I will take the road less traveled. Sinasabi ng Bible na meron makipatandaan kakaunti lamang ang kumapasok na. Pero ang kakantongan naman ay mulay. <coughs> In conclusion, God does not show favorites. He blesses some and condemns others on the basis of the way in which they have chosen to walk. Ibig kong sabihin, no, kung halimbawa ang, ang feeling ng tao ay parang ako naman ay isinumpa ng Diyos. Hindi po yung totoo. Pinili natin ang daan na hindi isang ayon sa daan na gusto ng Panginoon na makakaluwalhati sa Kanya and for our ultimate good. He blesses some and condemns others on the basis of the way in which they have chosen to walk. And that's very glaring in Psalm chapter 1. 
Psalm chapter 1 tells us that the way of blessing is the way of the righteous, of righteousness, which involves the avoidance of worldly wisdom and worldly actions, and entails the pursuit of intimacy with God through His Word. Kaya, for example, kung ang isang uh, tao na nagkikilin na siya ay believer, nagkasawa siya ng hindi Christian, o hindi, hindi, hindi siya tiyak na Christian niya, inasyon lang yun. And then, nagkagulo-gulo yung kanyang buhay. Sinasaktan siya, niloloko siya, so on and so forth. Pwede mo bang sabihin na, ano ito, kinabayaan ako ng Diyos? Panginoon, bakit ganyan ang ginawa mo sa buhay mo? Hindi mo kayo nang sisihin ng Panginoon Diyos. Yun ang buhay na ginusto mo. And the consequences will always pursue you. Hahamuli at hahamuli tayo ng mga consequences ng nagawa ko natin kasi. Of course, God can forgive us. He is a forgiving God. But the consequences, brethren, will always be there. Para ipanalang sa atin na sa salita nga na crime does not change. Diba? Your sin will soon find you out. And God will have to discipline you one way or another or the other. So would you desire the blessing of God in your life? Then, you must walk in His way. Decide today that you will be the blessed man and the righteous man. A blessed New Year, brethren, to all of us. Purihin ang Panginoon Diyos. Tayo ay manalangin bago tayo mag-salo-salo uh, sa Lord's Supper ko natin.